Hello and welcome to this HOG4 tutorial which will show you how to set up both MIDI and linear timecode and then enter timecode values using the learn timing function. Let's first of all look at setting up MIDI timecode. Plug your MIDI cable into the MIDI input on the rear of the console. Press Setup followed by the Control Panel Soft key and select the MIDI tab. Configure the MIDI input from the drop down menu. In this case, we are only using the internal widget of the HOG4 console, but additional timecode widgets can be connected via the USB ports. Linear timecode, or LTC as it's referred to, is set up slightly differently. Connect your source to the LTC input on the rear of the console. To bring LTC directly into the console, the internal DP8000 must be running as LTC input is handled by the DP8000 process. Additionally, up to eight external LTC widgets can be connected to the console or external DPs by USB. Press Setup followed by the Network Soft key. Select the DP8000 and press Settings followed by the Timecode Widgets tab. Press the plus button and then use the drop down menu to map the LTC widget to an index. Again in this case we are using the internal widget. The HOG4 software allows for multiple cue lists to be triggered by different timecode inputs. This tutorial will only focus on one cue list but it is important to remember to configure the timecode options for each list you wish to use timecode with. To do this open the cue list window by double pressing the choose key. Press the Options button and use the drop-down menu to select the timecode source you want this list to use. You can either enable timecode here or directly from the cue list window. The Trigger Forwards Only option would prevent the cue list from going backwards if the timecode was skipped to an earlier time. When left deselected, the cue list will follow the incoming timecode whether it skips forwards or backwards. Return to the cue list window and enable timecode using the enable timecode button. Press the view timecode button to display the timecode toolbar. The source of the timecode for this list, along with the type and format of the timecode, is displayed here. The clock is displayed in the format of hours, minutes, seconds and frames. It is also possible to simulate timecode, which is useful for if your timecode source is temporarily unavailable. When simulate is selected, the incoming timecode is ignored. To start simulating timecode, press the go button. The jump button allows us to quickly skip the timecode to six predefined values. To set these values, press the timecode symbol on the left of the toolbar to open the options window. In this window, you can also select the appropriate format to match your incoming timecode. Timecode can be directly entered into the wait column of the cue list by touching a cell and pressing set. From the toolbar, select timecode and enter the value. Another way to record timecode values is to use the learn timing function. This allows you to associate timecode values to each cue in real time as you play back your cues. Press the learn timing button and then start your timecode source. In this case, the timecode is simulated. Whenever you press go, the timecode value at that point will be entered into the wait column. When you are finished, deselect the learn timing option. To play back, go to your first queue using the syntax go to, queue number, enter. Use the jump button to reset the clock and then press go to start the timecode running. Your queues will play back automatically. You may wish to edit some of your timecode values, and this can easily be done by selecting the cell and pressing the set key. Navigate through the cell using the left and right arrows, make any changes, and then press enter. A block of timecode values can also be edited in such a way that the relationship between them remains the same. This is particularly useful if, for example, a song was inserted into your show and you need to move the timecode to make space for it. To edit a block, click in the first cell and drag down to the last. Press set and enter the new value of the first queue, followed by enter. All subsequent queues that were selected will be edited relative to this. 
Any entries in the wait column that are not timecode values will be unaffected by this action. It is also worth mentioning that learn timing can be used without timecode being present. Whenever timecode is not running, every time go is pressed, a time value equivalent to the duration between go presses is entered in the wait column. In the next tutorial, we shall look at performing a full system restore of your console. Thank you for watching.